friends, this is Jody from Clutter Free Classroom and I'm here to show you some up close images and give you a little bit more detail about the 10 activities that are included in my Valentine's Day Math and Literacy Thematic Unit. I designed the kit for grades K through 3. I've um, taught all of them. I currently teach third grade and I've used the activities with um, each of those grade levels. The table of contents lists the 10 activities. It'll tell you where you can find the slides on the PDF and also um, gives you some detail on how to use it, just some clarity and some directions. First activity is a making words activity using the word Valentine's Day. I designed it so that it could be used as it is if you have letter tiles or magnetic letters that you can have the kids manipulate, you can do that. Otherwise, they can just cut the bottom of the paper off and cut the squares out to use. Um, which that also makes it great because you could send it home as a homework activity or a family activity if you want to do that. This is a, um, it's a little poem and the way I've used it, I've used it two ways. I've had the children draw a self-portrait of themselves and I've also attached a photograph of them and then they make a collage by decorating it with paper and ribbons and little pieces of wrapping paper which kind of ties along with, with the words of the poem say. This is my antonyms game. It makes a great language arts center. Um, the cards on the left can be printed out. I laminate them for durability. You don't have to. And then each card gets cut out and then I cut up between the two words. So where it says hot and cold in the top left corner, I would just cut, um, cut it in half but with a little bit of a pattern to it with the scissors so that it becomes a self-correcting manipulative. So the kids take the cards and they match the word on the left with its antonym to the right and they'll know if they're correct because the cards will go together. And then I also created a recording sheet if you want some accountability for the center that they can fill in. This is a game called Hugs and Kisses and I created it for this unit because hugs and kisses are represented with X's and O's like tic-tac-toe. So basically one child is X, the other is O and they would then read the sight word and then fill it in. I actually used this with my son. He loved this as a method for uh, learning his sight words. And what you see here is the first of two games that are basically identical. The skill is just a little bit different based on the level of your learner. This is a game called Life is Like a Box of Chocolates. You'll just need to add um, a pair of dice with it. And the goal is to cover the pieces of chocolate by rolling the dice and then adding the numbers together. And wherever the sum is, that's where they can put the place down and then record on the recording sheet again if you'd like to use that. This is the exact same game. The only difference is instead of doing addition, they use the dice working on um, multiples of three to find the um, answer to that. Same type of idea. This is something I used as a bulletin board last year, Hogs and Kisses, and they did a writing activity, um, a descriptive writing project using Hershey Kisses, and then they created just cute little pigs out of paper and we displayed them on the bulletin board with the pig holding the writing um, and the sign you see is just great for displaying with your bulletin board. So you've got a bulletin board all set to go. You'll notice there's three different um, types of paper. I have one set up just for our youngest learners where it's basically just a closed activity that complete the sentence and do a picture. In the middle I have primary ruled paper so those children who need the headline, midline, and baseline for their handwriting that's all set for them and then on the right is more of an intermediate rule just for those kids who are maybe writing cursive or perhaps just printing smaller. And this is a graphing activity where you use conversation hearts, those I think it's made by Neko, those little candies that you know have the messages on them. If you have younger learners you can use it as a center, you can have an adult sit with them, you could do it as a class activity and kind of guide them through it. Uh, for your older learners or your more advanced students, they could easily just do this on their own and then maybe do some observations recording on what they notice about the bar graph. And this I love. This is a, um, a class book that I make every year and I've made it for as long as I can remember about what is love. And their answers are absolutely hysterical. In fact, I displayed them at my wedding as a, as a book. So it's the same types of paper you remember from the previous activity where it's just designed for each grade level but you can print them off it also makes a great bulletin board and instead of using it as a class book you could just hang it up that way or display it as a bulletin board and then make a book afterwards the kids love reading it over and over and finally we have a, another differentiated math activity I've got two different pages using the candy hearts kind of goes through a bunch of different skills um, estimation number sense little bit of everything rolled into one 
Thanks for taking the time to check it out. If you're interested in the product, just head over to my website, www.cfclassroom.com. And on the right-hand side, you'll see a My Products button. Click on it and scroll right down. You'll find this product along with a bunch of others and a whole bunch of freebies, too. So thanks for checking it out. Bye.